Welcome, folks. I wanted to give an introduction to cutting planes, which are a technique to get better and, and better approximations for integer, integer linear programming problems. So the basic idea of cutting planes is as follows. Pretend we have a um, linear programming problem. All right, so the constraints are given by this gray polytope and the direction vector that we're trying to maximize is given by this black arrow. Okay, but pretend furthermore, we want a solution where all the, the variables are integers. So our only possible uh, solutions are not the entire gray uh, polytope, but only these uh, black integer points inside of it. So a common thing to do is forget about the integrality constraint and just solve your linear program and you'll find this optimum right here, okay? Which is, I mean, sort of close to the optimal integer solution, but, but not really. It seems like you could do better. So the basic idea of cutting planes is to find a new constraint that you can add in as drawn in red. So we're gonna find a new constraint that we can add in where we don't remove any integer solutions, but we do remove a lot of fake non-integer solutions. And then when I add in this new constraint, you know, I have this new polytope of feasible arbitrary solutions. And so then when I solve that using linear programming, you know, I find maybe this solution which is a much better approximation of the best integer solution. Questions so far? There are many different types of cutting plane algorithms. Today, I just wanna describe the Gomery cut, which is one way to find such a new red constraint. So this content is from the notes by Mikhail uh, Larov for an analogous class on linear programming. Let's just, um, well, one thing I should say is the basic setup is um, maximizing C transpose X subject to AX and most B with X non-negative and um, we're looking for integer solutions. For the Gomery cut, you need all entries in A and B to be integers. All right. You can obtain that if they're just rationals, just by clearing the denominators. So let's do an example. We're gonna maximize 2x1 plus 3x2 subject to the following constraints. So um, this line here gives me x1 plus 2x2 is at most three. And this dotted line down here gives me 4x1 plus 5x2 is at most 10. And then I want my variables not negative and to be integers. So really I only have five possible solutions. All right, so pretend we were just gonna solve the integer um, problem first. I think that, you know the direction vector that we're trying to optimize um, well, anyways, I guess it's pointing if we're that way. Yeah, okay. So first we're just gonna solve the, so the problem forgetting about the integrality constraints. And we know how to do that using the simplex method. We first put things into equational form using slack variables. So X3 is our slack variable for the first equation and X4 is our slack variable for the second equation. And so the inequalities have become equalities. And now I have four variables and they're still all integers just because, you know, um, X, X4 is an integer because, you know, all my variables and constants on the left-hand side are integers. And so is my constant on the right-hand side. And then we can start doing the simplex method. My original basis will just be X3 and X4 as my basic feasible solutions. So in my first simplex tableau, I solve for X3. X3 is equal to three minus X1 minus two X2. Solve for X4, that's 10 minus four X1 minus five X2. 
And then the function that I'm trying to optimize is 2x1 plus 3x2. All right, since both of these constants are positive, I could pivot over x2 or x1. Let's just choose to pivot over x2. So I'm increasing x2. And then my bound here is when x2 becomes um, 3 halves. And my bound here is when x, x2 becomes 2. Um, and uh, 3 halves is smaller than 2. So, um, so x2 is going to become my new uh, basis vector. And x3 is going to get replaced. So in this first equation, I solve for x2 as such. And then I plug in that formula for x2 into my equations for x4 and into my, um, my function that I'm optimizing. And let me just do the algebra for you. It took me a lot of attempts to get it right because there's a lot of fractions. So I have x4 is 5 halves minus 3 halves x1 plus 5 halves x3. And z is equal to 9 halves plus 1 half x1 minus 3 halves x3. So now I can only choose, only choose to pivot over x1 because the coefficient on x3 is negative. So let's pivot on x1. Um, OK, so. From this equation, x1 can increase up to 3. But from this equation, x1 can only increase up to something less than 3. So x4 is going to get removed when I add in x1. So I, I take this equation and I solve for x1. Here I've done so. And then I take the, the new formula for x1 and plug it into um, here. And I also plug it into here to update my tableau. And I get the following, x2 is 2 thirds minus 4 thirds x3. Minus 5x2 and z, whoops, I'm reading the wrong line, plus 1 third x4. And z is 16 thirds minus 2 thirds x3 minus 1 third x4. All right. So, you know, this would be just stall solving the standard simplex method. We'd find a solution that's one of these corner vertices, which is not necessarily the best approximation to an integer solution. But now I'm going to introduce the Gomery cut. Both of these values here are not integers, right? If they were integers, that would mean that we found an integer solution, but we didn't. The solution was, we found was 5 thirds, 2 thirds. So I suppose we're finding um, this solution. This solution, ah, come on, Eilert. Okay, we're finding this solution right here. So we're going to leverage the fact that we know we're finding a non-integer solution to find a better, better constraint we can add in to, to get closer, to do better. At the end of the day, we're going to find a new constraint that we can sort of add in. It does something like that, that cuts off our old um, solution from the simplex method and will leave us with a better solution. So, Whenever you have a non-integer component in your solution, you can do the Gomery cut. You could do the Gomery cut on either of these. You could do it on both of these. We're just going to do the Gomery cut on one of them. So we'll do the Gomery cut on the second row, which is possible because 2 thirds here, which x2 is currently equal to, is not an integer. So write out the equation from that row and put the constant on its side by itself. So x2 plus 4x3 
minus one third x4 is equal to two thirds. Now we're going to take the left hand side and write it as a sum of two portions. The first portion is called the integer portion, and the second portion is called the non negative portion. Okay, so x2 is an integer, we can just put it on the integer side. x3, take out the, you know, largest integer part less than four thirds. So take out one x3 and then leave the remaining one third x3 to go in the non negative part. Negative one third x4, you know, add the, the integer right below that. So what's the integer right before below negative one third? It's negative one. That's going to go on the integer side. And then on the non negative side is going to be the remaining fractional non negative part that you need to add to get back to one, negative one third. So if you take negative x4 and then add back in two thirds x4, you get to negative one third x4. So all of these constants, which here are just one and negative one in front of the variables are integers and the variables themselves are integers. So this side on the left is, is an integer. This, this bit on the right is non-negative because we've, adjust, we've chosen things to have positive coefficients here. And all of our variables are non-negative as well. So it's important that you know, this negative one-third does not split as zero and negative one-third. You need to split it as negative one and two-thirds so that the two-thirds bit right here is, is non-negative. Okay, so <laughs> it's just splitting into two terms, an integer part and a non-negative part. So let's drop the non-negative part and we'll now, we'll now get an inequality. So if we drop the non-negative part, because it's non-negative, I know that x2 plus x3 minus x4 is at most two thirds. Seems like I haven't done much. Just drop this non-negative part, take the equality to an inequality. But the left-hand side is an integer. So any integer at most two thirds is also at most zero. So let's um, deduce a better bound. Any integer at most two thirds is also at most zero. This is called Gomery's cut. And we take this new constraint and add it to our list of constraints. I'll show you a visual of that. There are really nice ways to add in this extra constraint to your simplex tableau and just keep going without slowing down your computer algorithm, but I won't go into those details. Let me visualize this extra constraint for you. So, my extra constraint is x2 plus x3 minus x4 is at most zero. Let's write that in terms of x1 and x2, my non-slack variables, just so I can visualize it in the plane. So remember, here's x1 and here's x2. x3 and x4 were slack variables. So what is x2 plus x3 minus x4? If I want to get rid of the slack variables, I just plug back in the equation for the slack variable x3 and the equation for the slack variable x4 in terms of x1 and x2. And then combine like terms and I've, I've um, transformed the left-hand side into something only depending on x1 and x2. So this being at most zero means that this is, is at most zero. So I sort of have an at most zero here. And then when I arrange, rearrange, I move the seven to the other side to obtain three X one plus four X two is at most seven. That gives me this new constraint. Okay, so this is a new constraint that it cuts off, it necessarily cuts off your old solution. So our old solution um, was this point right here, this blue point. That old solution necessarily gets cut off. 
and you find a constraint that um, slims down your feasible region without getting rid of any feasible integer solutions. Okay, so now you just solve this updated program here. I think in the next step when you solve this, you'd find the optimal integer solution. But in general, you'd have to add in more and more Gomery cuts to try to get better and better and better. Branch and bound, which we might talk about on Thursday, is one way to, to organize this search for finding good sequences of Gomery cuts to slim down your polytope or your feasible region um, as efficiently as possible. All right, let me end with uh, one more comment and a summary. What is the general principle that we used to go from this equality to a bound on only the integer part that became a better bound on only the integer part? Well, the principle you, we used is this fact. So if you have integer variables x1 up through xn, and an equality of these lines, where no longer am I assuming that the constants need to be integers. That implies that this bound with integer constants is also true. You know, you've, you've made the left-hand side potentially smaller because you've made these constants um, smaller. Um, and maybe, Maybe I need non-negative variables here. And you, but you've also made the right-hand side smaller, right? So that's the sense in which you might be doing better than this what this equality was telling you before in some sense. You have made the right-hand side potentially smaller. All right. So the, the proof is just the same logic we used above. Um, if my, variables are non-negative, then by taking the constants and making them smaller, I've only reduced the left-hand side. And then um, this is equal to B. And now what I have is because the variables are integers, on the left-hand side, I have an integer, okay? And so since left-hand side, is an integer. This implies that the um, the left hand side, yeah, any integer that's at most b is also at most, you know, the uh, smallest integer that's not larger than b. All right. So in summary, I introduced the Gomery method for cutting planes which are a way to find new constraints to add to your linear programming problem, removing um, non-integer solutions, and then allowing you to get better bound on integer linear programming problems just by solving uh, arbitrary linear programming problems. Thanks everybody.